Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna to be covering something that 99% of dog owners do without even knowing it and how it's impacting your relationship with your dog. Now guys, this is huge. I've never seen anybody really talking about this and breaking it down the way that I want to here today. It really doesn't matter what's at the end of the leash. It matters how you're using it, how you're applying that leash correction to your dog. Almost every single client that I work with either online or comes into this building that is having problems with their leash is using the mechanics of the tool that they're trying to apply incorrectly. And the reason that is, in my opinion, is because nobody's actually talking about the application of the correction. A lot of people, including myself, talk about what collar to use, uh, when to apply it, even how to apply it. Now, for those of you who don't know what a leash correction is, a leash correction is trying to correct a behavior that is unwanted or undesirable on the leash. So essentially, what we're trying to do when we correct a dog on the leash is teach them that whatever they're doing is wrong and we want them to do something else or it's inappropriate behavior. So this video is definitely not about what collar to use and why. I have many other videos for that. This is simply because I have so many clients that are walking through this facility as well as online talking about when my dog pulls and I pull back, the collar doesn't work. Or if the dog pulls and they're, they're continuing to pull, they're choking themselves and so on and so forth. And I this is simply to go to the absolute nucleus of a lot of problems that are created on the leash. Oftentimes, people put dogs on the leash and it doesn't matter what collar you're using and they're using it to apply pressure. And the collar itself is not really what's correcting or changing or modifying behavior. It's the application and the way that the mechanics actually work within the collar. I think oftentimes people just put a correction collar on a dog and think that when the dog pulls against it, you pull back, that it's supposed to work and teach the dog. That couldn't be further from the truth. You have to know actually how to apply the correction in order for it to work. And that, my friends, is what I'm about to teach you right now. So I'm just gonna grab a slip collar really quick and start going over this process. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with a slip collar, it's also known as a dominant dog collar. We just call it a slip, it's a little bit easier. And all it does is it just applies pressure when you pull through or if the dog pulls through. So you have your slip here. And basically what this does is it goes through and it slips down. A lot of people think that when you, when you put this collar on to the dog and they pull against it, that the actual pressure from when they pull is the correction or that's what's supposed to stop them from actually pulling. On the contrary, dogs will literally choke themselves out, cough, hack, so on and so forth until they get to what they want because they do not care about this excessive force around their neck. Now this is the same exact thing with the prong collar. Oftentimes people think that when you put this on, the dog pulls through and they feel that pressure, then the dog is supposed to stop. Now the actual correction is gonna come from you as the handler. The success of your correction and the success of your dog learning new behaviors and modifying behaviors is gonna completely be predicated off of you, the handler, and your skill sets with actually applying these tools properly. I, this is going to the core of what I'm talking about, about corrections. We're not talking about specifics, healing, what collar, so on and so forth. I'm talking about how to actually correct with any type of collar that you put on your dog, as well as where to put it, how to fit it, so it's effective and you actually can get results from it. So, so the correction is a mechanical thing. You have to have enough leverage to be able to pop the collar so the collar can come up and distribute that pressure at once. So the dog goes, hey, wh what do you want me to do? And that correction on the leash is really just to get their attention. That's why the prong collar works so effectively is because instead of having one point of pressure here like the, uh, like the slip collar, it has probably 20 points of pressure. So it actually harnesses and evenly distributes pressure across the dog's neck. If you don't like prongs or they're illegal for whatever reason, I completely respect and understand that. You don't have to do that. I'm just talking about the application on how to get the dog's attention. So, oh, I hit myself. So you can effectively train your dog or modify behaviors. So again, here's the dog. They go like this. You pull back. They pull this way. You've immediately 
taken away your opportunity to correct the dog and apply that correction because they're pulling and you're just doing this. Now, if you're playing tug of war with a dog, they're gonna, they don't, again, they don't care about that. And you can actually develop a lot more frustration and reactivity on the leash. So the actual correction comes from when the dog kind of pulls forward, you're able to then use your leverage to correct the dog like this. If they're already taut and they're tight on the line, you lose all your leverage. You have to regain some leverage and pop back and be able to really snap that leash. And I'm gonna show you a couple different ways on how we teach our clients here at the facility. So what happens is, is when you actually correct the dog like this, it comes, it pops the dog right here and it corrects the dog right there. And then the actual slip will go right back down and drag down. So the correction comes right on time. So the dog doesn't sit. You ask them to sit, correct, release, correct, release. And like I said, oftentimes what people do is this. And then the dog goes into panic mode. They don't really know what to do. They get all wiggly and you're not really teaching much there. This is gonna, this is gonna come up. It's gonna pop the dog. It's gonna put pressure right on this point. It's gonna correct the dog here really quick. And then it's gonna release and then really quick so it's really defined and you're really able to have clear lines of communication when the dog does something wrong. So if you get into a situation where your dog is actually pulling you like this, you see when you're tight like this, you have no leverage. So you have no choice but to pull the dog back. What you need to do is make sure that the dog is here and as soon as they cross that line, again, your collar, if it's, we're gonna go over fitting in a minute, but when it's here, you correct like this, you correct like this. And so when you have a prong collar and a bigger dog, that you need a little bit more control over, this is a way safer tool because they're not going to continue then choke themselves out. Because this is the Herm Springer, I'll leave it in the link in the description below. But when the dog pulls, you have all these points of pressure on the dog's neck all the way around instead of just one point of pressure like I demonstrated last time. Two, four, six, eight, ten, probably 20 different points of pressure. And that's and so again, a prong collar's on, the dog pulls. You guys, you guys think that, oh, he's gonna hit the prongs, he's not gonna like it, he's gonna stop. Hell no, they're gonna keep going. Because the prongs and the pressure this way doesn't affect the dog whatsoever. They do not care about that. And so the second most important thing besides the mechanics and how you use it is how it's fit. Um, this is another big thing that so many people just don't know. It's not like everyone's doing it wrong. There's just no information out there. So with Greta, <laughs> hi sweetheart, which is at one of our boarding trains. As you guys can see, she has her Soresto flea collar on. She also has her flat collar on. So if I zoom up a little bit more, I'll show you guys where the prong collar should be fitting. So you guys can see this right behind the ears. There's the flat collar, there's the Soresto collar. The prong collar should always be sitting the highest out of all of your collars that you have on. The flat collar, first of all, and making sure you can't throw your, your, your prong collar over the dog's head. If you can fit your dog's prong collar over their head without it detaching it and attaching to get around their neck, it's way too big. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Go. So I got a piece of food, and what I'm gonna do is use it as a distraction for the healing to improve it. Good, so you guys see that? Pop, pop back. No pull, pull. It was quick pop, quick pop. That prong came up. So yep. again, it's just a quick snap. It's, it literally takes two fingers to just snap the end of the collar. And like I showed you guys in the beginning of this video, how they come up in unity and go, hey, that's wrong, Ern, incorrect. It's a correction to teach him what I want him to do. And so that's what I wanted to put together here. And you can see how much of a difference it makes when you audit how you're doing it at home and how much of a difference it can make to you and your dog. It doesn't matter what you're using. You have to be able to not pay tug of war on the leash with your dog in order to teach them. If you're wearing a harness, if you're wearing a flat collar, head halty, whatever we didn't discuss here, it's the same exact application. You can't pull on the dog as they pull with you and expect for that correction to come up and be meaningful and actually demonstrate some sort of correction for the dog. So anyway guys, I hope this video was helpful. If you haven't yet, don't forget like this video, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment below, let me know what you thought of the video. I appreciate you guys walking, watch, walk, walking, well maybe you were walking, but I appreciate you guys yeah. watching. I'll talk to yeah, you next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, coming in, yeah. Flex. I just wanna win, yeah. LA BB, who we running with, yeah. Two, two, three, three, I'm on ten again, yeah. State your name, big, big dope on flame. I just switched the lanes, damn, he did it again. I just flipped the pain, stripping and dipping in base, slab on everything.